for engineering services general studies video lectures visit www.isgeneralstudies.com for mechanical engineering video lectures and question and answers discussion visit www.gatemec.com hi friends hope that you all did well in 2018 esc prelims exam we at iesgs are very happy that many questions came directly from uh, the articles we have provided in our website iesgeneralstudies.com and the current affairs daily current affairs which was consolidated in the name hyperloop 2018 and some questions came directly from the test series we have given in this site plus we have provided you video lectures in this youtube channel and analyzing this year question this year is the second year that upsc has started new pattern for the prelims and this year question was more tougher than the 2017 paper and this is an indication that in 2019 the paper can become more tougher and this year relative importance to different subjects changed last year environment was given more importance this year also environment is important at project management got more more questions similarly aptitude section was very easy in 2017 but it was tougher in 2018 and this year the question standard were very good and the questions were very clear non ambiguous and of like comprehensively covered the syllabus so the next year also you can ex expect the same lines so what you have to do is do not take upsc for granted because they can bring in any changes at any time so what you have to do is be prepared with all subjects in the syllabus comprehensively and little deeper so as to so as to enable us to answer any question that the upsc gives for you the next exam next is question number 15 in a particular test the marks scored by four candidates a b c d are as follows marks obtained by a and b are to 100 marks obtained by c and d add up to those scored by a b scores four times that of d d scores 10 marks less than c the marks obt obtained by c will be 30 15 20 25 <coughs> here we have given four equations directly mark of marks of a plus b is 100 and mark of c plus d is equal to that of a and b's mark is 4 times that of d and d's mark is 10 marks less than c and we have to find the mark of c so let us convert the equation in terms of the variable c here we can take this as on direct equation c minus d equals 10 put it as a first equation now where we will get uh, c and d here c plus d is a and a is a is 100 minus b and b is 4d so it is equal to 100 minus 4d and putting in this equation <coughs> c plus c plus d equal to 100 minus 4d taking c and d to one side c plus 5d equals 100 so we got a second equation c plus 5d equals 100 this is second equation remember we need c so eliminate d for eliminating d multiply 5 with this equation and 6c equal to 150 and c is equal to 25 the answer is d so the next question is question number 39 let the sum of squares of successive integers 0 1 2 3 etc n minus n n be denoted by s let the sum of the cubes of the same integers be denoted by c it's a desirable that c by s 
as n increases in steps of unity from 0 is given by the series 0 by 1, 3 by 3, 9 by 5, 18 by 7, 30 by 9, etc. For n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. What will be the ratio for n is to 8? The question seems to be a little confusing, but you don't have to worry about the language of the question. Just go with the series. Here we are, it is given sum of the squares is s and sum of the cubes is c. We know the sum of square formula for the sum of squares n plus 1, 2n plus 1 by 6 and sum of cube is n into n plus 1 by 2 the whole square. Right. So, now we can directly find the ratio c by s. This n square n plus 1 square by 4 n into n plus 1 2n plus 1 by 6. n into n plus 1 by 2 2n plus 1. And if you substitute the values given, we will get the required ratio. So, we are asking for n is to 8, right? Put n is to 8, 3 into 8, 8 plus 1 by 2 into 2 into 8 plus 1. It is simplifies to be 108 by 17. The answer is B. B is the answer. Next question is question number 45. A wall rectangular in shape has perimeter of 72 meter. If the length of the diagonal is 18 meter, what is the area of the wall? Here we have given a rectangle. This A take us B and the diameter. <coughs> so we have to find the area, right? Area we know it is A into B. And we have given that perimeter is 72. What is perimeter? 2 into A plus B. It is 72. And length of the diagonal is given. It is 18. What is length of the diagonal? It is root of A square plus B square. It is given as 18. So, we can take A square plus B square equal to 18 square. It is 324, right? 18 square. Now, we have to find AB. And we know the equation a plus b the whole square equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab. Use this equation to find the value of ab. Here a plus b the whole square is 72 by 2 that is 36 square is equal to a plus b the whole square is 18 square plus 2ab. Here we can find the ab from this equation. It is 36 square minus 18 square by 2. And we know the easy way to find difference of the squares. Because a square minus b square equal to a plus b into a minus b. Right. Use that formula here. 36 plus 18 into 36 minus 18 by 2. What is the answer? The answer is? 486. 486 is given in option B. This does. Next question is question number 46. To isolate an enclosed area for conserve, conservation, an open traverse is keep run keeping closed but outside of the exterior boundary of the area through ground points A to B, B to C, C to D, E to F f to g and towards h to be eventually located. a b is 80 degree to the east of north line at a. Deflection or interior angle set b c d e f are indicated. What would be the magnitude of the deflection angle at g as marked so that g h may run parallel to b a. Lens are immaterial in this case. 
and the figure is given. Options are 190 degree, 210 degree, 200 degree, 230 degree. Here also you should not be afraid of seeing the length of the question and the details given in the question. Just you concentrate on the figure. What is given? It is given that AB is parallel to GH. Right. With that one hint, we can solve this equation. Now, what we can do is we can close this polygon. So, it has become a polygon of 8 sides, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H has become a polygon of 8 sides. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. What are the sum of interior angles of a polygon? Sum of interior angles of a polygon is given by the formula 2n minus 4 into 90 degree. Here n is the number of sides. So here the sum of interior angles will become 2 into 8 minus 4 into 90. What it could be? It is 1080. So here we are given some angles. Let us find the remaining angle. What is the interior angle here? It is straight line, right? So this is 100. Here it is. It will add up to 360. So it is 230. It is 80. 360 minus 90 is 270, right? It is 60, it is 70. We have to find this angle. And this angle will be same like this angle because both are parallel. So we have got some angles. 100 plus 230 plus 80 plus 270 plus 60 plus 70 plus angle G plus 80 should add up to 1080. Right. So here we can find angle G. It is 190. So the answer is Option A, 190 degree. Next question is question number 55. This is from geometry and in our test series we have given you a similar question like this. And the question came in the prelims paper is consider the length of a room 15 meter and width 10 meter. The sum of the areas of the floor and ceiling is equal to the sum of the area of the four walls. Then volume of the room. Here the room is there, we can take it as A and width B and height H. So it is a three dimensional figure. Right. So the question is given that area of the floor and ceiling is equal to the area of the four walls. So what is the area of the floor and the ceilings? Area of the floor is AB. And ceiling will also be same, right? So, area of the floor and the ceiling is equal to area of the four walls. What is the area of the four walls? It is area of these four faces. It is equal to A into H plus B into H to two times because each wall will come two times. This wall is same as this one and this is same as this. So this is given in the equation. Now we have to find the volume. Volume is A, B, H. So what else is given in the question? It is given like A is 15. Right. And B is 10. So let us see. Here we can write a, B is equal to A, H, H you can take it out, A plus B into H. So here 15 into 10 equal to 15 plus 10 into H. So we can get H directly from here. H is 6. And give apply this H here. So, volume is equal to 15 into 10 into 6. What it is? It is 900 meter cube. It is given in meter. So, the answer will be meter cube. The option is A. 900 meter cube. Question number 70 is the last question from the aptitude section. 
the same similar kind of question we have given in our test series also you can refer to our test series question number 5 on work and time and here the question is a small production unit now works six days per week with three and a half hour, half hours of first shift every one of six days and three hours of second shift for each of the first five days Wage negotiations led to an agreement to work on five days a week with both shifts together, clocking seven and a half hours per day, with a percentage increase in the weekly wages. How much change in hourly production would mean parity in the agreement for both management and employees? Here we have three variables: number of hours of production, and productivity, and wages. And there are two cases, so we can take like this H1, P1, W1, and H2, P2, and W2. Now, what is the condition? The condition is that management should not suffer any loss, and employees also should not suffer any loss. That means cost per uni unit of production should remain the same. How can we know the cost per unit of production? It is number of hours of production. Plus into productivity by wages, so it gives unit cost. So this should remain same. So this is our equation. Our question asks the ratio of the change in productivity. So we have to find the ratio P two by P one. More specifically, P two minus P one by P one. The change with respect to the original productivity, and in terms of percentage, it will come into hundred. So this is the value we have to find. Now let us equate the equation and find the ratio P two by P one from there. So P two by P one here comes like H one W two by H two W one. H one We know what is the per hour production in the first case, and in that first shift is for three and a half hours for six days, right? Plus second shift is for three hours for five days. So this is the total working hours in a week. This per week This is the first case, and after agreement. The agreement is that seven and a half hours per day for the six, uh, for the how many days? Five days. So the new working hours is seven and a half plus the wage also increase. Take in terms of percentage, W one take us hundred, then W two will be one not eight because it is eight percentage increase. It is one not eight. So let us substitute these values here. H one is Thirty-six into one not eight by H two is seventy-five by two into hundred, and we have so two we can bring up like this. Subtracting minus one from both sides, we get P two by P one minus one. That is P two minus P one by P one is seventy-two. This will come come to find the multiple of yeah, we want to multiply it with hundred. So these two zeros we can cut, and by simplifying this we will get two seventy six by seventy five. This is the required ratio. Now let us check the options. Options are three point six eight, two point one five, one point one eight, and one point three three, and it is very clear that this ratio will be more than three, right? Seventy five into three is two twenty five. So this ratio is more than three, which is the option which is having more than three. It is three point six eight, three point six eight percentage. This option A. So option A is the answer for this question. For engineering services, general studies video lectures, visit www.ilsgeneralstudies.com. For mechanical engineering video lectures and question and answer discussion, visit www.gmed.com.